Welcome to today's mini lesson on labor unions and the progressive movement. It all starts with the immigrants coming to America looking for the streets paved with gold but finding them paved with muck. Here's an immigrant, for example, this picture was taken at Ellis Island and here they come off to America. When they come to America they find often these horrible working conditions like you see here where you have workers here and here and here in crowded situations. What would happen if any of these workers complained about their working conditions? Think about it. That's right, they'd get a new horse. And what would happen if a few people, not just one, but a few people got together and protested the working conditions and wages? That's right, they'd get a new three-headed horse. But what would happen if a whole floor of people or a whole organization went on strike? and said they won't work until they have better wages and working conditions. And that's what this presentation is all on, known as the progressive movement, but with a major focus on labor unions and their drive to make conditions better. The progressive era reformers and unions helped to create laws to protect workers and children. By the way, children are workers, but there is a special focus to protect child laborers. You can see in this picture here, when you say child labor, some of these are teenagers, and we'll be looking at that later in the week. What was the progressive movement? There were those who were trying to make progress, good type of progress, asking for reform or change for a better way of life. As we looked at this Gilded Age, we see one of the problems is industrialization is the problem that you see off here, and this is your second question. I'm not going to tell you the answer, but I'm sure that you could figure out what is the negative effect of industrialization. And as we move on to child labor and figuring out why child labor was used, it's all about the money, money, money. Because child laborers could be paid about half of what other workers were paid. And they also were small. They could get into places um, with smaller hands, do jobs that adult workers with bigger hands could not. Interesting statement here. If there be anything hated by children, if there be anything orphans can't avoid, it is child labor. Child labor, the robber of our youth, the robber of our rights. You've done much harm already. Please leave us alone. And look at that cartoon. One of the questions here asks you to analyze this cartoon. By 1910, around the time of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire, almost two million children were working, most of the time in horrible conditions. And we'll look at these in a little bit of detail in class. The children, and for that matter, a lot of industrial workers had low wages and long hours. I mean, look at the expression on this child's face, probably from the coal mine, and a young girl who was picking fruits and berries out in the fields. Sometimes they were paid as little as 10 cents a day. And of course, the bigger thing is that they missed school because of that. And school gives you the opportunity to rise up and to make something better out of your life. Just ask Yannick. They worked long hours, sometimes 10 to 12 hours a day. Same as their counterparts who are uh, adult workers, but certainly the child laborers worked just as many hours, if not longer. The conditions were unsafe. What seems to be unsafe about this? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's the bare feet near all these gears right here. That might be it. Or these machines which might suck you in. That might be bad. Take a look at this cartoon. I asked you to stop and do it before, but here's another version. What is going on in this cartoon? And I know I move kind of fast through these, but you do have some miraculous thing on your computer called the pause button. So if I move too fast, you can always pause it and answer it as we go. Because it would be real awkward if I just stopped and waited for you, because you're moving too slow. The rise of organized labor happens in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and features people of all different languages and nationalities. Uh, you can see the translation here in English. We want eight hours of work but you can also see it in different languages as well. Labor unions were formed to deal with problems in the workplace, um, both working conditions and low wages. A scab is a person who works when the union is on strike or not working. Best example, when in each of the classes during the sweatshop somebody got fired, we got them a new horse. A scab is a person who, when the workers are on strike, are willing to go take that job for lower wages. Labor union is easily defined here as a group of workers that get together to get better wages and working conditions from their employers. Now, if one person were to complain about their wages and working horses, they'd get a new horse. 
But if a whole group of people collectively ask for better wages and working conditions, the owner either has to listen or fire all of them and bring in a whole new team to do the job. Here's a com uh, cartoon for you. It gets cut off a little, but it says, I can't join the union. I don't need any more problems right now. I know what you mean. All that extra money and time off could be a real dilemma. <laughs> Those little cartoons are so funny sometimes. Ah, laughter. If you don't understand it, basically, she's saying, you better join the union. She's saying, I don't have time for it. She's saying, well, if you want a better wages and working conditions, you better join. She's saying, I'm going to spill this coffee on you. The most famous union that arose during this time period and we need to know about and is still with us today is the American Federation of Labor, otherwise known as the AFL. The American Federation of Labor worked to get new laws made to help the workers. This question is for you on your sheet. Did labor unions increase or decrease from 1898 to 1914? I'm not going to specifically tell you the answer, but I'm going to trace the line here. Woo! Woo! And right here is when the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire occurred. Now, a strike is one of the tools that a union has, certainly not the only one, but the strikes are the most dramatic and the riskiest because if the owner wants to hold out, they could just wait and, not, and hire a scab or they could just stay and wait and uh, fire you. So you're putting your whole life at risk here. I know some of you in the sweatshop activity said, I'm gonna go on strike, which is easy enough to say, but it's a lot harder to do when your family's depending on your wage. Oh, here's another political cartoon. I don't get it. You won't sign a contract with your own employees, but you do sign contracts with all of your suppliers. I have to, or they won't do business with me. I see your point. <laughs> oh, cartoons. What is on strike or a strike? I think you guys know this already. It's when people in the union stop working until they get what they want. Better salaries or working conditions. It's been tried for a number of years, sometimes with success, but often with failure. The most famous example during this time period is something called the Homestead Strike. And the Homestead Strike occurred in Homestead, Pennsylvania at one of Andrew Carnegie's steel mills. And it was at the steel mill that the owner, who happened to be in vacation in Scotland on the time, Andrew Carnegie, convenient time to go on vacation, had the wages lowered and said that the workers had to come to work or they'd be fired. Well, the workers didn't want to come to work, so they went on strike. To get past this strike, the management brought in replacement workers or scabs. And when those scabs tried to go into the factory, they were attacked by the old workers. Meanwhile, a whole bunch of guards were brought in to protect the strike or to protect the scabs. And what ended up happening was a very violent occasion. Um, you can see what it says here, but this very violent occasion led to bloodshed and death. And basically, it translates to a small war which was fought between the company guards and the union members. And the company guards won, the union members lost, and they were forced to go back to work at the same wage as they had before. It lasted for months, made Andrew Carnegie look bad, and some say that's one of the reasons why Andrew Carnegie spent the rest of his, or towards the end of his life, giving away lots of money to improve his reputation. This was one of the strikes that the workers did not win, but they certainly won enough and were able to move forward, and the strike turned to be a pretty effective tool, though often leading to violence. That must be a real powerful handshake. She must have one of those electric buzzers. That's not nice. Explain or describe this cartoon. Look at it. Just explain it out loud. I don't have it on your worksheet. Tell your dog. Tell your mom. Somebody. Somebody nearby. Just grab them. Go explain it to them right now. I'll wait. Good. But you can see if you need a little help with it. He's riding on the horse of Monopoly. He's got the train and national markets. He's got everything at his disposal. He's got the rich men here backing him up. And then you have the poor worker who's on, like, ironically enough, a horse that looks pretty nasty and sadly about to die. And then you have the worker. So the worker was up against a lot, and it didn't seem like the workers would prevail, but often they did. Because it's not about the one worker. It's about all the workers coming together in a union, which makes the difference. So there were these progressive movement workplace reforms that happened because of strikes, because of organization, and because the unions were able to come together. Certainly laws improved safety conditions. After the Triangle Fire, although the, as you saw in class, the owners were not found guilty and they opened up another shop, 
in general, you were not allowed to have those types of dangerous situations anymore. You couldn't have the locked doors. You couldn't have flammable material everywhere. You had to give more breaks. Those things start around 1910 and reach their zenith or high point during the 1930s and 40s, which we'll get to, of course, later on. But safety conditions improved. Eventually, work hours were reduced. Instead of having 10 to 12 hour work days, the eight hour work day is now more the standard, kind of the nine to five that your parents might have. And that includes time for lunch as well. There are still places where they work a lot more than nine hours, teachers being amongst them, but certainly you get the point. Changes have been made. Eventually, everybody received a minimum wage or salary. Men, women, and children were all paid the same. You couldn't pay the kid just half or the woman half. At least that's the goal. But even today, you hear people like President Obama talk about the need for equity and pay for women and men, and that isn't always there for a number of reasons. Now, this says it banned child labor, but it isn't that easy. I mean, stop and think about it for a minute. These kids right here who are working, when they lose their job, if it isn't tr truly banned, what are their families going to do? What if Yannick couldn't have worked at that lovely um, slaughterhouse? What happens if he went to school or he had to go to school? His family would have lost their tenement building, as lovely as that was. And that was the case all over the place. They're in a way, it's between a rock and a hard place because they need the job, but they can't advance because of it. And these kids are never going to have a better chance at life if they, they do this all the time and don't go to school. But of course, if they go to school, well then, they don't have the wages that they need for their family. But laws were made that regulated this just a little bit better. Here's another cartoon. First, we'll play a little game of hide and seek. I'll be the child labor inspector. And that's because that's how they looked into or investigated what was happening. They sent investigators, and some of them took pictures, as we'll see in class on Wednesday or Thursday. So what's important to understand about this? First, the progressive era reformers and unions helped create laws to protect workers and children from the bad conditions and low wages. You may discuss this with your dog or somebody else, but here's what you're going to do last. Not that. Don't worry about that homework part, although you certainly could go do that. Here's some questions for you. I'm going to leave this question up. I'll read through it, and then you'll answer it on your sheet. You have questions one through six. Many factory owners use child labor because A, children could read or write better than their parents. B, children are more efficient than other workers. C, children could be paid less than adults. D, parents wanted their children to have jobs. Which one is it? Write it down. Oh, I'm not even going to tell you. Number two, which was not a problem encountered by factory workers? Long hours, pay for working overtime, unsafe working conditions, or low wages? Notice the word not, which was not a problem encountered by factory workers. So three of these are problems, one of them is not. Number three, which was not a goal for workers organizing labor unions in the 1800s and 1900s? So which of these were they not fighting for? That should be kind of obvious. I'm not going to tell you, but it should be kind of obvious. Which statement best describes the progressive movement? A, progressive supported reform that changed working conditions. B, progressives opposed were against government. C, progressives were criticized by muckrakers. Or D, progressives supported monopolies and trusts. Five, what did labor unions yet use to get better working conditions? A, the help of children. B, protests and strikes. C, ads on the radio. Or D, the taking of hostages. Last question. The progressive movement included all the following except A, businessmen wanted to eliminate their competitors, B, labor unionists, C, reformers that wanted to eliminate child labor, or D, women's suffragists. So with all of these in mind, you should now have completed your worksheet. I don't think that I missed anything. We'll go over this briefly in class, but by doing this, uh, you now will have the opportunity to explore some of the people who brought about this change now that you've had all this explained to you. I thank you and say good night. If you're watching it in the afternoon, good afternoon. If you're watching it during the morning or early afternoon, I ask why are you not in school? Bye.